dear father we thank you because you answer prayers thank you, lord, jesus. lord first of all we're thankful for your goodness from january up to now thank you jesus you are a good god you are a kind god yes lord you're a faithful god thank you god. and lord we're praying for all marriages this today will grow stronger amen in the name of the lord jesus amen. christ amen none of them will have to divorce statistics amen we're praying for everyone that the marriage is a challenge maybe on the husband's side maybe on the wife's hand side on the wife's side that it will be ease and peace oh god amen in the name of the lord jesus christ amen we pray for children we pray for children they will do well amen their health will not fail amen. we pray for pregnant women that they would that their journey towards childbirth will be easy and slow amen i pray for the single people of also that this year there will be connections amen connections amen. in the name of the lord jesus amen. christ we give you praise and glory hallelujah in jesus mighty name we pray amen. before you have your sin let's shout a powerful hallelujah that's for your name or shout a powerful hallelujah amen please you can have your sins please you can have your sin praise the lord Amen. I'm ready for the God, God's word today. Yes. I'm ready for God's word today. Okay, let's go to Psalm 82. Let's go to Psalm 82. And this, um, and this morning, I'm going to talk about. This morning, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about in Christ realities. I'm going to talk about the realities of the divine life in Christ realities. Glory to God. Hallelujah in Christ's realities. Psalm, Psalm 82 verse 5. Psalm 82 verse 5. So, so, so the, look at this now. So the theme is um, the way spiritual things work is that it works with knowledge. Spiritual things works with knowledge. So the Bible says this, and they know not, watch this, it says they know not, neither would they understand, watch this now, because they do not know, they will not understand. He says, they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of causes so what did they know the next verse the next verse the bible says for i have said it says that you are what that you are god it says they know not neither they walk in that it says for i have said that you are what god it says and all of you are the children of the most high amen second corinthians chapter 5 in verse 16 and 17 second Corinthians 5 in verse 16 so because they did not know they were not able to function because they did not know they were not able to function please everyone look up here people always ask this question and says when i become born again or a christian what is the most important thing for me the most important thing is for you to know what christ has done for you it's for you to know that's one of the most important for you to to do to know what christ has done for you the reason why is that um I don't know about you but have you ever bought a gadget that you're not familiar with and before you use it you will want to go to the manual that's what happens in christianity you are now born again but you have to read through the manual and be like okay this is what the life of god is for me so second corinthians 5 verse 7 16 the bible says wherefore ends forth we what no no man after what the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet now know we him what no more let me read the, to you the amplified version let me read to you the amplified version it says now now on let's read together i want to go so we regard no one for me human point of view according to the worldly standard and values though we have known christ from a human point of view now we no longer know him in that way so watch this now so there is a human point of view so all of a sudden the bible introduced this concept he says there is a human point of view so when you look at me you can look at me from a human point of view and say oh he has a nice jacket on he's dark skinned you know he has nice sets of teeth he has you know you know um, a nice air cut. but that's a human point of view and what you said is correct the things you said right now are the realities of my current life the things you said right now are the reality of my current life but more than the human point of view there's also what a spiritual point of view and the spiritual point of view is superior to what to the human point of view so he begins to explain something and i want to see what he's explaining here and when we talk about in christ realities what is a reality i'll give an example of the reality is um, um let me see let me just call someone let me just call someone i don't know my will call uh, uh yes you come yeah come 
Yes, please come. Yeah. Let me just like a fresh face. All the protocols are fair complexion. That's you know. And yeah, but he's married. That's great. Yeah, excellent. So reality, his face complexion. You know, he's about five foot eleven or ten. Ten. Yeah, yeah. Five, about five foot ten fair complexion. Uh, he's my, you're married. You have many kids? One. one kid. He's married. He has one kid. You know. So those things. As I'm saying it, am I doing it to him or those are the things that it is? They are realities, right? So if I say, hey, meet him, and I say, meet him, and what they call it, his fame complexion is married. I, in fact, you know what? I believe you have a male reproductive system, organ. Yes, sir. You do, right? Yes, sir, I do. You, it's not female, right? No, it's male. It's male. You, you know, and the reason I'm saying so that it's just reality just like if i see him if i see him like this i see his ring i assume that he's a man i assume that he's married he might have a child or not i assume that he has a job those are realities realities are the things about his natural existence so they are realities of the natural life but they're also what in christ what realities so i'm coming there because we're going to look at that so today i want to teach about hey there's a reality of you being a natural person but when you come into christ there are realities of what you being in christ which is different from your natural reality and is actually what superior skip standing let me call um where's his mrs Modi? you mrs Modi, come praise god yeah mrs Modi, come look at that i want to show you something you know yeah you're married you're married yes, you're a woman yes, you get pregnant yes, you know the her realities because she's a woman is different from what his reality they are both human beings but they have what two different realities some are common but some are different so you can be we can be both oh wow this is so powerful because it's a male gender his reality is different in some way from a female gender so although i'm human because i'm a christian there are also realities that are different from the human experiences glory to god thank you god bless you god bless you patricia where's your husband uh-huh look at tell him to come yeah come 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come quickly come quickly come how did, how did your name escape me <laughs> what oh yeah yeah where's the where the pass passport Give him his passports. Yeah. Give him the microphone also. Ovi, how are you doing today? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. If a Patricia come today, I'm going to expose you, and I hope that's okay. You know, here. Patricia, come. You know, people don't know this about you, so I'm going to say where you're from. You know. So what the Bible says? Let's read the, the scripture again. It says, so from now, henceforth, we regard what? No one from what? From the human point of view. So it, it says that, hey, we regard no one from the human point of view. According to worldly standards and values. So there's a way to regard them. So this is Patricia, Uvia's wife. They look young, but I mean, that, that don't mind them. They have three kids. Yes. They have three kids. The first, the first child is how old? 19. 19 years old. Yeah, yeah. In our church, we have the gift of looking young. You know, it's, it's our gift. You know, yeah. If, if you have old people just enjoying our church, you start looking young. Praise God. M- Mrs. Gregory, how are you? Come, come and come and show. Let me, you know, j- just have a lot of old people in our church, but you never know. You know. Mrs. Gregory, just come so that I can just. One of our oldest church members, she's been here for almost 15 years, if not over. Yeah. Just let me your microphone. Mrs. Gregory. How many grandchildren do you have? Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks like she's just in her forties, right? She has six grandchildren. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What? Yeah, and you know, she has kids in the forties. Yeah, she has kids in the front. I'm just saying, good genes is in our church. Praise the Lord. So if you don't grow old, you don't have to grow old. You know where to come to. Praise God hallelujah you know where to come to it's a blessing with this church it's a blessing uh, let me joke with you i i traveled and you know one hair hostess was trying to hit on me and you will not believe this was trying to hit on me 
And he said, anyway, you're too young for me. He said, anyway, you're too young for me. So I was just curious. I said, um, so how old are you? He said, I'm 36. I said, how old do you think I am? He said, I know you're in your 20s. You know, just like... <laughs> This lady that was a Delta flight agent, I was like, oh wow, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh wow. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, good. Good. Give it to Patricia first. Let's start with Patricia. Patricia, how are you? Just so you need know, Patricia was not born and raised by Nigerian prince, and she's not natural Nigerian. She's Nigerian by marriage. By marriage. I'm just telling you that. So what does that mean? By the time you talk about food. Before you got married, what was your best food? Um, probably Aki, saltfish, Jamaican food. Uh, exactly. And English food. Yeah. So, so Akin, so I don't know what that means. Akin, so, you know. <laughs> our reality is based on who she was and how she was raised. So, even though we are human, watch this now. Even though we are human, our reality is affected by how we are what? Raised. Thank you. That's what I'm going to. That, that's all I need from you. Your, your husband will meet you in a minute. So back to you, sir. Back to you, sir. So watch this now. Watch this now. This is him. He has dual passports. So, but before he got, you know, let assume this is your first passport. Let me keep this somewhere in your pocket. You know, so, so this is reality. Because I'm trying to show you that there are two realities when it comes to you. As a Christian, you have a natural reality. But you also have what? A spiritual reality. So, when you just come here with this passport, where can you go without visa? Very few places. Very few places. So, what would your life be like with this passport? Which is the reality of most of us here. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Very limited. Very limited. We can go to Ghana. We can go to Togo. We can go to we can go to Cape Verde. You know, we're grateful. But, but you know, with this passport, if you have a health problem, what happens to you? You're pretty much stranded. You have to find healthcare locally. That, that's your, if you don't have money, what happens to you? Bad outcomes. You're, you're stuck. With, with this passport, if you don't have a place to stay, if you don't have a shelter for you and your wife and children, what happens? <laughs> Again, pretty bad outcomes. But with, this, with this passport, how much loan can you get? It's very difficult to get loans. With, with an and when you get loans, it's at about 40%, something like that. Very, so, very, very so, very so, so, so watch this now. So, it says, so, we, so when you have this passport, there's a way that we look at you. Is that not true? In fact, if you've ne you never traveled before and you ever travel, once you, I, I went to a country, I went to Australia, and they set me in immigration, and I was trying to pack my bags, and my passport fell out of my something. As soon as the next immigration officer said, go for secondary searching. <laughs> because, because he was looking at me through what? For my passport. So something happens to him, and now he has a second passport, which is what? Let's show us this passport, which is this passport of the United States of America. With this passport, what happens to you? Where can you go? Everywhere. Wow. If you have health emergencies, what happens to you? You just go, back, go to the U.S. and get treatment. You just go to the hospital? Correct. Wow. Wow. If, you cannot, if, you, if you're hungry and you cannot feed, what do you do? Well, you get a lot of help, especially if you're abroad. But even, even locally, there are a lot of government programs. For, for that? Yeah. Just because of your passport? Correct. Watch this now. This is what I'm trying to tell you. See what the Bible says. So from now, we regard no one from the point of the flesh. Though we've known Christ from a human standpoint, now we no longer know him that way. Look at verse 17. Verse 17, King James. Came to James. See what the Bible says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. I, some of you have gotten it. This is the natural me. But once I cross into Christ, I have a new passport. My reality has changed. If myself and himself are going to the US, and you know, no matter how much you think I'm his passport, pastor, once we get to the border, they go, US passport right, other passport left. Our reality is different. The question is this, do you know you have the reality of the passport you carry? That's the question. I know you're born again. I know you have this passport that says you're born again. But do you know the reality of the passport you carry? Let me give you a real life story in this church. Last year, one of our members, he got his British passport, you know, just not too long ago. And two months after, I need to go to South Africa. But he cancelled. And two days to the trip, his wife said, oh, by the way, why did they cancel your trip? He said, you know, I don't have a visa. And his wife said, duh, 
you've gotten your passport two months ago. He said, I've forgotten I've gotten my passport. You know, he has stayed so much with the old passport. The reality of the new passport had not dawned on him. He's the same thing when you go abroad and you're trying to iron because the will take light. <laughs> has that ever happened to you before? Yeah, you're trying to look at, let me just quickly because the bad things like that. They don't take light here. You know, the same thing. So the Bible says, Thank you. Thank you, the two of you. I'm, I appreciate it. Just give it to them. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we're getting here now. So the Bible says this. What's what the Bible says? The Bible says, if any man be in Christ. So when, when I'm in Christ, I have what? A new what? Reality. <laughs> Listen to me. When I had Nigerian passport, there were things I could not do. There were things I could not have. But with my new American passport, there are things I can do. When I was just a normal human being that was not connected to Christ, I had limitations. I had things I could not do. But now that I'm in Christ, there are new what realities. So this teaching is meant to say, these are the privilege of your new passport. Are you ready for that? I said, are you ready for that? I said, are you ready for that? Oh, glory to God. Someone say hallelujah. So when we say in Christ realities, number one, what are realities? Realities are facts, things that are real about your current state. When we say in Christ, in Christ means that it's where you are right now. When you get born again, you are in Christ. In Christ means you are in union with Christ. So what are the realities of the divine life? Let's read again. Second, oh, glory to God. Say hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't know the passport you carry, you can be cheated. I'm telling you, if you don't know the passport you can, you can be cheated. And you need to know what passport to show where you go to. Because some places, if you show your Nigerian passport, they go, move to the left. So you have to show your other passport and say, hey, I'm not only Nigeria, I'm British. When you confront demons, I'll be like, you know what? I'm a banker, I work in UBA. Demon says, this one doesn't know anything. Because that passport does not work with spiritual entities. You have to show your spiritual passport. What is your spiritual passport in Christ? What's my passport? I'm in Christ. What's your passport in what? In Christ. So look at what the Bible says. So look at what it says. So it says in verse 16, it says, first of all, we will not look at any man after the flesh. That's what he has said. It now says in verse 17, in verse 17, it says, therefore, based on verse 16, it says, based on what we said about not looking at people from their natural origin we'll look at them from their spiritual origin he says based on that if any man now be in christ in christ means if you're born again if you have come into union with christ he says number one the person is a new creature hey what does it mean is a new creature i wish what it means to you it means that the same way oh wow glory to god before you got that passport you didn't have citizen number or certificate in america as soon as you got the passport then your citizen file opened you existed as an american citizen literally you existed you never had a history before as far as america is concerned you never have a history you you know as a citizen you could have other kind of research a visa holder not as a citizen so he said if any man being christ he is a new creature what does that mean as a new creature my past is gone what do I mean my past see what the bible says here next time want to go oh come on now why are you reading to like uh, read like a new creature want to go what happened uh-huh so I want to ask you a question. If <laughs> Ooh, will you receive this? If they've been denying you Schengen visa, they've been denying you China visa. Now that you have an American passport, does that affect you? Your passport has cancelled the denier. Once you come into Christ, you don't carry over your liabilities. So when they say that eh, in your village that there's a cost for every firstborn, there's a cost for every secondborn, you say, excuse me, I have a new passport. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, in fact, when they say, excuse me, do you, do you need visa? I don't need visa. I have a new passport. I have a new passport. You know, sometimes I'm worried about some of you. You are looking for deliverance. Deliverance from what? Hey, you are in Christ. The one that needs deliverance died on the cross. He's, Jesus Christ said, He said, when he, when he died, we died. 
died with him when we were raised from the dead we were raised from the dead when that's how we do baptism in baptism we died baptism is a sign that when christ died we died with him when we come out of the water we were raised from it oh someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah he said your family the cause of poverty is raining which family I'm a new creature because I'm a new creature. I'm born from a new family. My natural flesh is born from the Epomoba family, but my spirit, my new person, is born from God. Glory to God. Stop judging me. Someone says, Are you not in the world? I'm an in the world of the flesh, but I belong to another family. The Bible says we belong to the family of God. We are citizens of heaven. Someone say, Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. If war starts right now in Nigeria, you know what happened? All the Americans will be contacted by the embassy. There will be a flight to take them out because they are citizens of another country. Listen to me. No matter what you do, you don't touch an American citizen. The same thing with us. We belong to another country. We belong to Zion. We are citizens of the, of the city of Zion. The thing, why am I saying this? I need you to begin to look at yourself from that place. Let's read. This is good. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. It says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, what? And someone said, you know, my family, we all have asthma. Which family? That's the question. Which family? You keep talking about, you keep talking about your human natural family. And that's why the more you talk about your human natural family, the more it has a hold on you. It's time to talk about your spiritual family. He says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. Hey, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. So I says, every time people break up with me, I'm just tired. I'm tired. Nobody wants to marry me. When? That has stopped. You're not a new creature. You're not a new creature. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Did you notice he didn't say all things? He said all things in the plural. All things in the poor. Glory to God. I, I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Someone say hallelujah. It says, and look at the next thing. It says, all things are passed away. Look at the next thing. I want to go. What did he say? No, not the word before all. He says, look at it. Why did he say look at it? If you don't see it, you can't become it. He said, behold. He said, behold. All things have become new. They say, now family, people don't go beyond this year. Which family is that? Let me show you your family. Because you, you are so attached to your physical family. You belong to a spiritual family. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Someone say hallelujah. So, someone say hallelujah. 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 I don't know if I've ever seen my son before. My son looks just like me. Because I'm the dad. He has my genes. He has my blood. It came from me. Where you come from shows what is in your blood. So, you were born. So, physically, you look like your parents. Because that's your physical origin. But spiritually, you look like God. Why? Oh, wow. Glory to God. Because the life of God is now in you. Oh, wow. 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 I didn't even know I got there on time. That was too early. We're meant to get it next week. The life of God is now in you. See what the Bible says here. He says, whatsoever is born of what? Whatsoever is what? Born of what? So watch this. When a human gives birth, it becomes human. When God gives birth, it becomes God's. He said, whatsoever is born of God. He now tells you your nature. He said, whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. What? Some of you came from family when they transferred high blood pressure to you. You say, ah, oh, my parents have that BP. I have BP. Oh, my parents have uh, asthma. I have asthma. But in God's family, they don't transfer bad things to you. No. He, what does he transfer? He transfers victory. He says, whatsoever is born of God, overcome it. He says that if you come from God, victory is in your blood. Are you here? He says, if you come from God, what? Victory is in your blood. Victory is what? In your blood. Someone say, victory is in my blood. Someone said victory is in my blood. I understand that things are hard and things are tough. But listen to me. I'm not just an Nigerian. I can check out. 
when you talk to, when you talk to preach in America say, and things are tough you know no matter what they are enjoying with you just know they can leave because their source is not only here their source is somewhere else so for me even though things are tough my source is from heaven the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I, I can't talk like other Nigerians they say if, if the government doesn't help we are finished I can't talk like that because why others depend on the government my dependence is on God the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd Tinubu is not my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd Naira is not my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd the economy is like the Lord is my shepherd the source is outside this natural source oh someone say hallelujah Paul says, why are you talking like this? Because I'm walking from another divine reality. There's another reality I'm walking from. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. You can do better than that. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You must remind yourself, I'm a new creature. So all of a sudden, you used to, you used to, you used to have problems with pornography. Now you got born again. Don't be like, you know, you know that I'm a pornographic addict. That's the problem. You are not calling yourself who you are. You say you are what a pornographic addict. Is that who you are? No, you are a new creature. I know the way it works. The way it works that you have to believe who you are to become it. So as long as uh, I'm a pornographic addict, then you become what every time you on the phone, every time. Because that's who you are. So why not change and say I'm a new creature? I'm a new creature. What are all things are passing away? What is all things are passing away? Hey, all of these habits are what pass away. You are going with your friend. I want to say, hey, womanizer. He said, no, be my fault. I don't they try. I know. I, I, I they try. This time. Uh, he said, this not just hook me. Even my wife knows that they try. Don't let him call you womanizer. When they say womanizer, I say, that's not where I am. I'm a new creature in Christ. The reason why is that your life will rise to your confession. Some of you, even the way you address your husband, your husband does something wrong. You're a cheat. You're a silly out cheat. The more you call him a cheat, the more he becomes a cheater. Look at him and say, honey, I'm very upset with you. But you are a man of holiness. Call the holiness out of him. So you're laughing? You know what's going to happen? He will rise up to it. So you know why you're laughing? You have never tried it. No of you have ever tried it. The, the people that keep saying they are cheat, they get worse in cheating. You know why? Because they can't help themselves. Why not call them? Let me teach you something. Will you receive this? Jesus Christ got to the tomb of Lazarus. You know what he said? Did he say Lazarus is dead? Did you ever him say Lazarus is dead? What did he say? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He never called you what he was. He called you what he wanted to see. Start calling your husband what you want to see, not what he is. Maybe your wife is always nagging. Say, ah, my wife, the peace of God is in you. And when you say, say no, no, don't give me that, don't give me that. I'm very hot, I'm hot now. You know, you know that I'm very, when I'm angry, I'm angry. You, you know that madness is when I'm angry. You say, honey, the peace of God is in you. You call out the peace, praise God. Did you read in the Bible when the storm was raging? Jesus Christ said, He, he said, Peace be still. He called the peace out of the storm, praise God. The reason why is that whatever you call it is what it becomes. You don't look at yours, man. Syria cheetah. Cheetah, cheetah. Cheetah, cheetah. See, life and death are in the power of the soul. I'm not saying that promote is responsibility. In fact, this is what women do. Your husband is cheating. One, you just ignore as if you don't know anything. That doesn't change things. The other one, you don't want to fight him. And let me say this quickly the most frustrated people in marriages are the people trying to change their partner because nobody can change somebody else change is a personal thing and if you want to be happy in your marriage you must know that there are some things you cannot control and that person to change is strictly that decision you can create an enabling environment for them to change but that change is their own but when they do wrong call them 
and say, my husband, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What will happen to him? It will sink inside. Because nobody had ever told him that it's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So as he's driving, and he sees backside, his head wants to turn. He will say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. The reason why is this, guess what? Your action follows your words. Glory to God. If you have a very stingy husband, say, my husband, you are generous because of the life of Christ in you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so it can never work. <laughs> it's kind of, you know why you say it can never work? But you have never tried it before. Have you tried it before? Every time you say it's stingy, has he given you more money? No. Start calling him. You must remember, the Bible said God calls the things that be not as though they were. Look at him and say, my husband, you are generous. My husband, you are generous. My husband, you are generous. You are so generous. You know, as you say you are generous, you will just see that his hands will start getting loose. The akagon will reduce. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Everybody say, I'm in Christ. The reason I'm saying so is that what you believe eventually is what you become. John chapter 1 verse 12. So, if you keep believing something and saying it, it eventually happens to you. I'll give you a good story. Um, yesterday, one of uh, one of one of one one former governor's daughter sent me a letter, and they said, "You remember the time you asked me to see you? I told you we could not have children. I told me to write my letter of congratulations." He said, "I wrote my letter. I said, finally, after five years, I'm now pregnant and I'm carrying my child." He said, "I wrote it and I was crying because we've done every treatment in this world. This is a governor's daughter. What can they afford? But I'm not pregnant." He sent me a message yesterday. He said, Pastor Balaji, I, sent, I was trying to send this message on Instagram to let you know that I had the baby four months ago, only to look at my previous message that captured my letter of congratulation. It's amazing to tell you exactly as it is in my letter that I will carry my baby after five years. That's what I'm doing right now, carrying my baby. He said, thank you for encouraging me. The reason why is that your life will rise to your confession. And why, what you need to do is to know who you are. Is to know who you are. Glory to God. See what the Bible says, First John chapter 1 verse 12. Are you, are you ready? Are you prosperous? Yes, That's the problem. Because for you to be prosperous, you need to prosper to believe you are prosperous. That's not how it works in the kingdom. In the kingdom, you have to believe first for you to what? Become prosperous. In the kingdom, believing is before becoming. Believing is what? Before becoming. Rest with want to go. But as many has received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of even to those who are. So guess what? They had to first believe on his name before they became the sons of God. You have to first believe on his name before you become the sons of God. Luke chapter 1 says, Blessed is he that believeth, verse 37, for there shall be performance. So, believing precedes performance. In Christ. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let me read something to Romans chapter 5. This is how my outline, but I just want to put it here. Romans chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So in Christ, realities means that these are the realities of us being in Christ. The first reality that I'm a new creature. Number two, all things are passed away. Number three, I'm a child of God. What does I'm a child of God mean? Victory is in my blood. Victory is in my blood. God cannot fail. Victory is in my blood. I'm a child of God. As a child of God, I cannot be disadvantaged. He says, whatsoever is born of God overcoming this world. There's nothing in this world that can stop me. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? There's nothing. He says that he says, whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world. There's nothing in this world that has the capacity to stop my dreams. Why? Because I'm a child of God. God can be stopped. Glory to God. You know, some of you, when you are praying, you'll not hear things like, um, let's come into God's presence. Come where? No. I mean, you don't understand. Come where? 
see i'm a child of god the gene of god is in me if you see me the gene is in me i'm god's mobile headquarters praise god i'm god's mobile headquarters because god is in me stop praying as if god is far from you father as we come into your presence what presence we carry the presence stop singing songs that remind you as if god is far god is no longer far from me god is here i i incubate god i'm god's mobile headquarters once you start talking like that someone say i will show you you say show me show me can you show a shrine what makes a shrine a shrine is that a god lives inside is it not true if god lives inside you what are you are you not a divine shrine glory to god i said glory to god Romans chapter 5 verse 17 hallelujah Romans chapter 5 verse 17 hallelujah these are so you know i'm telling you this you know americans will tell you that in america you know you can just walk to the hospital and get your baby bring your baby out even if you don't have money to us that nigerian that is like impossible because in nigeria if you have children and you don't have money they will deliver you but they will seize your child in america once you don't have food what do you what do you go to you have che- stamps chips they just go somewhere and get food in canada they even give a check people that don't work get up to one thousand dollars every month so you you that you enjoy you can't understand it that okay they check for what for not working and they give you like one thousand dollars one thousand dollars in our money is a lot of money but the reason why is that that's the reality of that place i'm only saying to you that you belong to a kingdom do you know the reality of your kingdom and until you know the reality of your kingdom you cannot take advantage of what the reality of your kingdom you will be a nigerian in heaven's economy but experiencing nigeria not heaven someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah let's read this glory to god are you ready one to go for if by one man's offense death reigned by man how much more they which what ah I, i'm not sure if you saw it too in christ there's something you have there can you see it what is it huh can you be graced and cursed at the same time why you say cause is following you he says they which we will give is that what he said he said they which receive up ah, ah, yeah so when we say grace 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 this is my soul this is what we're talking about we have received not just grace we have received abundance of grace everywhere you go have received abundance of grace Legal you are going for an interview have received abundance of grace you are going for a job have received abundance of grace you, you submit an application have received abundance of grace the reason why that in Christ we have received what abundance of grace he did not say grace he said abundance grace in excess grace that is flamboyant grace that is overflowing grace that is surplus oh somebody say hallelujah say i receive abundance of grace someone says ah and you don't have grace for marriage it's not me <laughs> how can i not someone say you know if someone told someone they say hey what, what happened you didn't ha- you don't have head for husband you know except you are deaf and dumb why would you choose head for husband hey except you are deaf. he said you know you chose money you you chose good career but you didn't choose husband where is that in the bible he says he got it God is not scarce. Say, choose one and lose one. He says he has given me abundance. That means financially there's abundance. That means maritally abundance. In health abundance. In career abundance. In marriage abundance. Relationship abundance. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Say I receive abundance of grace. I wanted to say now. Say I receive abundance of grace. Say I receive abundance of grace. This is my and you know what I'm saying. So I say well. If I've received it, what my life like this? The reason why it's like that is that you never believe you have received it. And the way it works is that you have to believe it first to become it. So today, you start believing it and you begin to see it because you say, I've received abundance of grace. You go and they say, You didn't get the job. You say, Well, that doesn't change anything. I've received abundance of grace. You know what happened? With time, things will begin to change to what you believe. I've received abundance of grace. I say, I've received abundance of grace glory to God I receive abundance of grace what you believe is like a magnet it draws things to you 
So once you believe you've received the abundance of grace, it draws grace to you. In Christ, I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. I'm not cursed. I'm delivered. Look at Colossians 1 verse 3. See, I'm not looking for deliverance. Oh, let me tell you something. Don't let them use you to do church business. They say you need deliverance. You should bring 500,000. What kind of deliverance is that one? Can they deliver more than what Christ has done? Colossians 1 13 and 14. He said, Christ has delivered us in the past. I'm delivered. I'm not looking for deliverance. Let's just want to go. Want to go. Want to go. Uh huh. I want to ask who is going to deliver us? Who is going to deliver us? Who has what? Past or past or future? He says, Who has delivered? They say, You have money spirit. I'm delivered from it. They say, There's a curse. I'm delivered. Someone says, What really? You are delivered. He says, Who are delivered us from the power of darkness? Someone says, Why are things so tough? Because you don't believe they're delivered. Your Satan is taking advantage of your ignorance. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Did you ever have a, self, a prefect that used to cheat you when you were in secondary school because he didn't know better? Or did you ever have a teacher that your parents used to give money to, but your parents not tell you how much they give the money to, and he just give you something? Because you don't know what your parents gave when you were young, they will give you a stipend and they will take the bulk because they know you don't know. Satan knows you don't know what you have, so you'll be taking stipend. Meanwhile, everything belongs to you. Praise God. A few days ago, you know, my kids on holidays are like, oh, let's spend one or two days in this hotel just down the road, just, you know, just to have a family time together. And, you know, the way my assistant had booked the room, I didn't realize again that breakfast was included. This is just a few days. So I told my wife, I like, can you imagine that breakfast is this expensive? I said, you know what? The truth is that I'm not even willing to eat already. And they have a lounge. I said, I'll just go to the lounge and pick fruits and eat. And, you know, you know, the kids and all they can do ahead. So when I finish, I, I come and pick just to check. I just, let me just check this thing. And I just checked. He said, no, the rate includes breakfast. Hi. I called my wife. My wife said, my wife said, we've all eaten nonsense already we are full <laughs> and the reason why we did not know you're not knowing is depriving you of what Christ has done glory to God you're not knowing is depriving you of what Christ has done do you know you are blessed look at that scripture look at the scripture who has delivered us but you are the one looking for deliverance you are the one looking for oil you are the one going to the mountain but you have been delivered every time something shows you're not delivered remind yourself i've been delivered i have what been delivered why the moment you believe i delivered it will manifest the moment you believe you're in bondage it will manifest what do you believe the second thing is this look at romans chapter 5 verse 17 he says this romans 5 17 he says we have received what abundance of grace this is what I will say as I close. Every time you know what you are in Christ, verbalize it. That's the way you make it happen. What do you do? Verbalize it. In the realm of the spirit, until things are said, it don't happen. In the realm of the spirit, until what? Things are said, it don't happen. Our tongue is our ATM pin. Oh, wow. Did you get what I said? Our tongue is what? Our ATM pin. So every transaction needs a pin your spiritual transaction in the pain so so don't just say eh, well i know that i have abundance of blessing no what do you do as you're going for an interview i have abundance of grace as you wake up in the morning i have abundance of grace i have abundance of grace why my pe- my tongue is my spiritual pain i'm putting it for what each transaction let's pray stand on your feet